All right, everyone, I'm aware that I look absolutely ridiculous. This is my actual backup pair of glasses. I think this is the second time I've had to do this, like in the last half decade. Uh, my main glasses, you know, the trademark Styx Hexen optics are actually sort of in the shop because one of the nose things broke and it's like, you know, you can't really wear that. You got to get it fixed. Uh, so those, I'll be getting like new lenses for them soon also. And I'm going to get like anti-glare lenses uh, because I think some people said that might improve uh, actually the, the video quality oddly. Uh, these ones make me slightly nauseous though because they're like little tiny fucking uh, stupid Santa Claus glasses and I fucking hate them with all of my mind and passion and soul. Uh, so I'm going to try to get through my videos and choke back my bitterness and rage. Uh, we got to talk about Hydrogen Hillary though. Because... Any ability for her to exact rage uh, from people has long since passed. Uh, she's now, uh, according to Gallup, and, and take it with a grain of salt because it's a single poll, obviously. Gallup says she's at like 36%, which is uh, hilariously like right where Trump is. They're almost exactly at the same level. Uh, this is the same dynamic. The reason why this would be believable is it's the same dynamic we saw during the election. You had about a third of the, you know, politically minded populace was gung-ho for Trump. About a third was really gung-ho for Clinton. The rest were like, what the fuck? Uh, they were voting third party or they stayed home or they wrote in like <laughs> Bernie Sanders or, or Rand Paul. Uh, we've seen this uh, consistently for the last year and a half. So it makes sense. But I think it's magical. Clinton should actually feel very, very happy about this because the fact that a third of the country kind of likes her is actually astonishing. It should be 0%. Her approval should be at zero. She's not in actual politics doing anything uh, monumental. She spent a year doing nothing but whining and being ineffective. She and the other Democrats now have crumbled before Trump's tax proposal, um, which, which is, by the way, I think a good thing for the Republicans. Oh, I can't wait to analyze this. Like down the road, there are so many things to be said about it. It's gonna be a fucking hilarious video. Uh, hydrogen Hillary Clinton though she's like a warmonger corporatist and now nobody likes her but apparently like the Democratic partisans still you know they're kind of okay with her by the way that 36% has got statistically speaking it has got to include at least a, a slim proportion of the actual left and probably the center although I think part of it might be like anti-Trump like uh, neocon Republicans like, they, they are certainly feeling more at home in the Democratic Party. You know, the Bushite Republicans, the Mitt Romneys, um, you know, sort of the post-Reaganite goofy Republicans, the ones that lose with grace often, uh, they're the ones that really, they liked Clinton, and they endorsed her. That could be another reason, by the way, why her approval is, is low. She gets... I, I said during the election, if you think it's a good thing that a bunch of Republicans are endorsing Hillary Clinton, think again because it breaks the, the two-party dichotomy that's an illusion. Uh, I know that. You, a lot of you probably know that, but a lot of the normie people, they don't have a fucking clue. That begins to break down even in their, you know, somewhat propaganda-addled minds when they begin to notice, isn't it a little bit funny that people are like, you know, the, the same people that were saying they hated each other a year ago, all of a sudden they're buddy-buddy because my mean orange Hitler. Now, I think some people began to notice that. McClinton should be very, very proud of her roughly one-third of the country that thinks that she's okay. She should be very proud because not everybody could be a chronic whiner and a warmonger and suck down banker cash for a year and embezzle and defraud people and expose state secrets. Not everybody could do that with or without the support of the media, which she clearly has. Most of the media was on board with her completely, loved the shit out of her, even a lot of people on Fox wanted Clinton to be elected. When she complains about being mistreated by the media, it's uh, the most stupid thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, not everybody could do that and then have a third of a group of people still think that they were okay. That's actually quite something. It's like with Trump. He's got about the same level. But he takes a beating every single day. The media talks about how he's probably trying to be a dictator. He probably is a puppet of a foreign state. It makes sense that his approval would be low because they haven't let off of him for over a year because he doesn't want to play nice with them. And he's got some Republicans gunning for him too. So it's, it's not a huge surprise. I think, by the way, after the tax plan, 
when Krugman is wrong and it's not economic Armageddon because why would you take him seriously? I think his approval rises above 40 because of this over the course of the next year. And I think it creeps upwards from there. And then when the election happens, the generic Democrat insert here effect that we saw in reverse with, uh, what's his name there? The very hungry candidate from Ohio there, uh, Kasich. Uh, it's the same effect. That's why it looks like he's weak compared to a you know generic Democrat right now. Once you put a, a name and a face to that and you get to air out their dirty laundry, his approval will rise a few more points. He'll be roughly where Obama was when he was running for re-election. I think that he probably does get re-elected. A lot of people don't believe me, but I'm telling you, I think that he will. Much to the extreme exas uh, exasperation of the Democratic Party. They're not going to know what to do. They're going to melt down and then they'll reform their party. I don't think they're going to pull it off for the midterms. I think they'll do okay during the midterms, but they'll, they're will they not going to retake the Senate, I don't think. Um, that means more stress, more schism. That weakens them, by the way, for 2020 even further. You're going to have an, ex uh, an exacerbated Bernie Sanders effect with whatever left-wing candidate comes along next, and or the Green Party, which is exactly why they're going after Jill Stein. They're hoping to cripple the Green Party because they're terrified that Trump gets reelected because five or six percent of Democrats defect to a third party. That's exactly why they're going after her. It's just an establishment ploy. She's not working with the Russians. If you believe that, you are no different than the people that were moronic at the time and believed, hey, my next door neighbor might be a commie because he said something about how he, how he might want to join a trade union. That means he's an automatic commie. Uncle Sam told me so. It's bullshit. You know it's bullshit. You know, people should know better. They know better about all past eras of propaganda. Like, oh yeah, that person wears all black. Well, that doesn't automatically make them a devil worshiper. Well, no shit. You know, 20, 30 years ago, the way I dressed would have been considered so unexcited. They would have assumed that I was worshiping Satan at the time. Now most people know better. They're like, oh, maybe it's like Gothic style rock or you know, something like that. Maybe it's just, it's just fun. It's just what that person happens to like. It's the same thing now. And Hillary Clinton is a symbol of the establishment. It's dying off. Just like Hillary Clinton is dying off. I thought it was funny. They had that fucking uh, so, what was it, song for women on SNL. And you listen to it. And it was meant to be a joke, like it was meant to be kind of cringy. So in, in all honesty, some people didn't quite get the self-satire that it was kind of meant to be. It was still like really over the top. It's hard to listen to. And they have that like Hillary Clinton segment where it's obviously not her singing, but I saw people both on the left and right pretend like they, they didn't know it wasn't her actually singing there. They thought Hillary Clinton could actually hit like, you know, a Tina Turner notes. I'm sorry, it's not happening. It's so funny. It's like 36% approval. My God, 36% of the people in the United States uh, uh, have some sort of palpable issues mentally. It's one thing to say, hey, I'm a partisan Democrat. Okay, I can't agree with you but you know it's your choice but the thing is hillary clinton you shouldn't support her either because she's done irreparable damage to the democratic party she is in fact not a good person to uh, to emulate or hold up to to any degree uh, you shouldn't be doing that look she she crippled your party she lost you michigan for christ's sakes against somebody like donald trump and i said for months it's not that donald trump is like uber strong candidate that's what he projects it's just a part of it's partially charisma it's a game it's shakespearean it's worldwide wrestling literally speaking it's from his wrestling days and his apprentice stuff that he knows how to do that the other part is his opponent was just weak and she's still weak what's hillary clinton done to stand in his way he gets his tax reform he gets his travel ban. Uh, he gets the basis of his wall funding. He'll probably get the next phase fairly soon. He gets to shake hands with Schumer and Pelosi to the point at which there were people like, like Molyneux. He thought that Trump was selling out. He's going to get some watered down deal to be like, basically you get two bricks at the border and then the Democrats get 99% of what they want. I said, no, it's not what's happening. You watch. Now he's stabbed Pelosi and Schumer in the back. They're still fuming over it. And the time is drawing nigh at which they're going to have to hammer something out or he's going to take action on his own. And it's going to be funny to see. I bet that action won't be 99% Democratic stuff. It's not going to be like, you know, some alt-right style move, but it's not going to be, a, it's not going to be liberal in form. It's going to include crackdowns on sanctuary cities. At this point, I think that's probably the big thing he's aiming for because he knows that solves a lot of the other problems right away. You know, that's one... 
run reason why people are still streaming across the borders hey there's somewhere to go where the federal agents they can't do anything about the fact that i'm here because san francisco or burlington offers them a place to stay you know burlington has become a sanctuary city and it's true uh when i was up there the last time the demographics have shifted a bit it's not like you know the, the fucking paris or something some people they exaggerate a little bit but it is there you can tell yeah there's some of that going on it's a sanctuary city federal agents can't do jack shit about it so far by the way hasn't actually caused any problems look our problem is the opiate crisis so <laughs> they're big they're oddly enough in vermont at least bigger concerns in burlington but Hillary Clinton's crazy. She's a total loser. She's literally a loser. She lost the election. Haha, <laughs> it was fucking funny. Donald Trump is your president too. I'm not going to get tired of saying that because like so many people, including Trump fans, didn't expect him to win. They were demoralized and the Clinton fans were like, oh, we got this in the bag. It's going to be great. And Clinton had that like glass ceiling thing. She was going to come out like uh, she was already planning like balloons and fireworks and big ass, you know, however many pixels wide glass ceiling like in total 3D shattering and falling down on the crowd and killing them because that's what Clinton's into. Uh, she had this huge, it was going to be like the most monumental thing since like the New Year's celebration. It would be like a new, it would be like Times Square on New Year's Eve. That would have been the mood at Clinton HQ. Instead, an hour later, John Podesta comes and says, oh, Clinton's very tired. This isn't over until it's over. And it's like, it's fucking over. And she was drunk and probably irate. She's probably throwing things around. That's what the her Secret Service agent said. That she was throw. She attacked Bill. She was like distraught, called Obama names and stuff. I can believe it. By the way, at least that means she's not a one-dimensional caricature. You know, she's actually capable of feeling frustrated and angry. It's actually to her credit. She has emotions. Some politicians, I'm not 100% sure that they fucking do. Like George W. Can you imagine George W. getting angry? Uh, no, he gets mildly frustrated a couple times when it's clear that the Iraq war is going the wrong way. It's about all we got. That's about all. Peace out.